Hello, my Teletubbies, my Tubies, my beloved. Ah, uh, oh God. I was going to do this one live so you can see my face, opposed to the beautiful pensive fan when I'm always in a pensive state of mind. But I had a rough day at the office today. I work with the legislature, you know, your president and mine, Donald Trump. And it was, it was, it was a long day. I work with the assembly, the Senate. And uh, sometimes I tell you, I don't get out of that place until midnight sometimes, starting January. And I didn't think it would be so busy today, but it was. Anyway, I still wanted to come home and make this video. I came home. I took off everything except for my bra. I always keep my bra on. And I brought me some KFC before we whatever. I took an Uber, you know, because I couldn't even take the bus. I'm so exhausted. So I had the Uber stop me off at Kentucky KFC. Picked up me some bird. Uh, brought me back home. Took off all my clothes. I had to feed my cat and uh, do my uh, fill myself with, with a, a thigh of, of chicken, whatever. And I'm going to do this video with you because I love you and I want to try to be regular. So today's topic for discussion is what makes a narcissist feel guilt? <laughs> I think that's a good topic. But actually, the real question that we should ask ourselves <clears throat> is, can a narcissist feel guilt? First of all, in order to feel guilt, you first need to have a conscience. Am I right or wrong? Because narcissists have no conscience, there are no limits to the destruction that they can cause in other people's lives. They have no conscience. And they do this all without even an ounce of guilt or remorse. After doing much research, and God knows I've done so much research, and I was speaking with the guy, you know, the guy that I told you about in my previous videos, and he explained to me that narcissists usually blame others for their behavior, and they rarely admit that they think anything is wrong with them. They also exaggerate their self-worth, often putting down others to make themselves seem more important. They also don't really like to notice. If you ever check this out, or if, if, if you take time to think, go in your past, your mind, you notice how they never really like to notice the success of other people. And they are usually jealous of other people's success. But if somebody fails, or if they do something that fails, if they fail at anything, it makes them so happy inside. It, that's what makes their day. To see other people fail. You know? That is the saddest thing ever. Now, a person with a conscience could never feel good about themselves thinking the way that narcissists think. I will tell you what they do. <clears throat> One thing that they do, I want to share this with you. They don't really feel guilt, but one thing that they do feel, and they feel this very, very strongly, guess what it is? It's shame. They feel shame when they're confronted with a failure, defeat, criticism, and when they lose a disagreement. Victims of a narcissist confuse this shame with the narcissist feeling remorse or guilt. But it's not guilt, honey. It's just shame. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it confused. So if you haven't heard from your narc in a while, think about what shame is all about. What is shame is all about? What is, what is shame all about? When we are ashamed, we feel like we want to disappear. We want to become invisible. Shame is a horrible feeling. And your ex-narc must feel too humiliated and feel... They feel small. They feel so ashamed because he realizes or they realize what a good person that they lost. They jumped out of the pan and into the fire and they are too ashamed to admit that you were right about most of the disagreements that you've had and that you were the best thing that they ever had in their miserable lives, their miserable, pathetic lives. 
Humility, <laughs> yeah, let's laugh at that. Humility is never a trait that a narcissist could ever develop. Remember, a narcissist does not have the capacity to empathize. So they rarely feel sorry for what they do. They, uh, they, they, they uh, I got it, I, I got it, really. They never feel sorry for what they do. They don't know how to uh, put themselves in the shoes of their victims. I don't even like to say victims, of their victors. They feel like they have been victimized. They have been deprived. They are the ones who have been mistreated. And if they seem to feel remorse or guilt, if they seem and it appears to you that they, oh my God, yeah, he does feel bad. He does have remorse and guilt. Trust me, honey, they are only faking it. And only they are only doing it to manipulate you so they so that they can get more narcissistic supply from you. Because think about this. Notice how they are only supposedly sorry when you threaten to leave or cut off your contact with them. Notice how they suddenly live. Not all of a sudden you told him, look, yeah, you know what? I'm done with you. I'm done. Now, notice how they suddenly can't live without you. Once you seem serious about ending it, whereas, think about it, a day before this, they were giving you this silent treatment, treating you like you were trash and gallivanting around town, all over town with somebody else. But the moment you tell them, I'm done, check out how fast they change. And it's not because they're sorry or they feel guilt. It's because they need you as further supply. Narcissists are out of touch with reality. You have to keep that in mind. They never, ever realize what they have done to their victims or their victors. And since they cannot tell fact from fiction, they figure, what the hell? Whatever happened to you, mm, eh, it must have been your fault. Eh, you know, don't blame me. It was your fault. They live in a world of pure fantasy land. In closing, my babies, uh, to have guilt, please remember, in order to do that, you have to have a conscience. A person must know the difference between right and wrong. They have to realize that they have done wrong and have caused harm to their partners or to the people that is in their lives. They have to recognize that. A narcissist will never come to that realization because they don't have a conscience. Just knowing that you were involved with a narcissist and it was no fault of yours or anything that you did wrong, that alone should be the closure and the help that you need to recover. Realizing that they were the narcissist they are the narcissists. That can be very, very healing for you. It helps to explain so much to know that that person is mentally and emotionally damaged. Not you. There is no future with these types of creatures. Also, my two Teletubbies and my Tubies, you have to remember what comes around goes around. And believe me when I tell you, I've seen it with my own eyes. I've witnessed it with my own eyes. They will be haunted by the things that they have done to people. It, ha it will happen. You have to believe that. You have to know that. It may not happen exactly the way you would like it to happen. But you can trust and believe that karma will come knocking at their door. Narcissistic people tend to trap themselves in their own web of deceit. You know what happens? People, they simply, they just get tired. They get tired. They, they simply don't put up with them anymore. They don't want to put up, them, up with them for long. And, and even their friends and their family eventually will ditch them. All those people that they thought loved them, they even got tired of it. It's called burning your bridges, you know? It's just a matter of time and trust and believe. Yeah, they're going to wear that out. They will wind up alone at some time in their life. They've burned all their bridges and there's no place left for them to go. They're going to suffer the consequences of their behavior. You shouldn't feel bad about being deceived, though. 
So don't feel like you, I'm stupid, I must have been stupid, or I must have been crazy, that I couldn't have seen the red lights, what was wrong with me. There was nothing wrong with you, because even the best of the best are caught in the same trap that you and me have been caught in. It's a reflection of them. It's a reflection of who they are and their ability to love. Being manipulated only means that you believed, we honestly believed, that we found someone who was as honest and as loving as we were. You thought there was a sincerity there. That kind of innocence and that purity is beautiful. It's a beautiful gift that is only God-given. So you need to hold on to it. Hold on to that beautiful gift that God gave you and hold on to yourself. The same compassion that you would extend to another person, you should also extend that same compassion to yourself. This is Sheila True Love, loving you as always. Until next time, adios, amigos.